Hey, take your Bibles uh, with me this morning. Turn to uh, the book of Romans, uh, chapter 15. I'm going to be there in a moment. And the book of Psalms, chapter 13. I've got a couple of places. Psalms 42 as well. Because I want to just talk about the necessity of hope. Uh, we're living in a really unusual time right now. I mean, there is, it just seems like darkness is everywhere, hopelessness is everywhere. We see people fighting and arguing uh, 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 in person and online. There's a sense of uncertainty about the future, and I don't know about you, but do you ever just wake up sometime and go, man, is this a dream? Hopefully, or some kind of nightmare. Maybe, maybe the, you know, maybe this is just all a fabrication of my mind, but unfortunately, it's not. It is the time and season that we are living in, and this morning, I want to talk about hope. I want to talk about, you know, the, the light of hope. Hope is the belief that my present circumstances can change for the better. I want to say it again. That's kind of my theme this morning. Hope is the belief that my present circumstances can change for the better. Now, hope is a common theme all throughout Scripture. You can read about hope in the Old Testament. You can read about hope in the New Testament. But there's one passage that I want to bring you to for a moment. Then I'm going to come back to it in a, in a minute. It's the Apostle Paul Romans chapter 15 and verse 13, he says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Paul calls Him the God of hope. We'll be back to that passage in just a moment. A few years ago, I read a book called Endurance, um, and and it was one of those books that you read. It's the, you know, that that you just can't put down. I mean, literally, I think I read it like in one day or a day and a half, and I finished it like at two a.m. It's a true story. I, I couldn't I couldn't stop it. I mean, it's a story about hope in dark times. It's the story of Voyager. Uh, Ernest Shackleton. He lived late 1800s, early 1900s, and no one had ever taken a successful journey to the South Pole and returned. There are many reasons why. Number one, it is so cold. On a good day, it's freezing, like 30, 32 degrees. That's a warm day in Antarctica and the South Pole. And, but, but most of the time, it's below zero. And so that's why you know, people have had trouble getting there. There's also snow and ice, of course. Uh, the one difficulty in traveling to Antarctica and to the South Pole is the hundreds of miles of ice that keep you you know, keep you uh, from the land. So people had trouble even getting to the continent because of the, the large amounts of ice. And the other part, uh, you know, the other challenge is the length. You know, it takes eight to ten months journey. That's a lot of food that you have to take. That's a lot of supplies. That's a lot of medicine that you had to take. But Shackleton was undetoured. He wanted to be the first person to the South Pole and to return. So he put an ad in the London newspaper and here's what the ad said. Men wanted for hazardous journey. Small wages, bitter cold, long months of complete darkness, constant danger, safe return doubtful, honor and recognition in case of success, Sir Ernest Shackleton. So that was his inspirational ad to try to get people to be part of his journey. Well, man, responses came in and wow, he found 28 people who said, you know, we'll be part of this particular journey. So those 28 people, they boarded the boat, the Endurance, uh, in August uh, of 1914. 
they travel several months and they get to the last island. It's called South Georgia or King George Island on November the 5th. They, they uh, put their supplies on board and they have thousands of pounds of supplies, 63 sled dogs, and they start and they leave for the South Pole. So you can see where King George Island is and what they're going to do is you can follow the red line that's on the screen. That's just kind of their their path. Now it's it's all wind and they're they're headed to the continent of uh, of of uh, uh, the Antarctica current continent. So it's 500 miles from King George Island to the continent. But once you get to the continent, it's 1500 miles overland, which is why they needed the sled dogs. So this is going to be a really, really difficult journey. So they leave in November of uh, uh, November 1914 and they start their journey. On January the 18th, the ice becomes a problem and they get trapped. They get trapped in this ice, which means now they can't navigate. The ice flows would be sometimes 20 to 30 miles wide. They couldn't even see water sometimes. So every day they would try to get in front of the boat. They would try to dig themselves out, you know, so you see the picture there of them getting off. They kind of chip away, trying to work their way through this ice. And this went on, you know, for almost six months. They couldn't navigate. They were just at the mercy of the wind and the ice. In October of 1915, uh, they they're asleep one night in the boat and they start to hear cracking and 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 what had happened the ice began to compress against the boat and it began to crush the boat there was no hope for them to get off the ice the pressure of the ice was too was too great so they pulled their supplies off and they made a camp on the ice flow again they can't see water the the ice is so Large. They had no radio, they had no flares, no GPS, no rescue ships. No one knows where they are at. They are in a very hopeless situation. They had no choice, but man, they started, they started uh, uh, eating uh, uh, penguins when they saw one, and they started eating seals when they would see them. And then one by one, they started eating their sled dogs because they had, they had no choice. But what kept them going? The ship is crushed. Eventually it just, it's smashed in two and they are living on ice in these tents. What kept them alive? What keeps them going? It is hope. Hope is the belief that there is a better day coming. They had been gone 14 months. No one knows where they're at. There's no hope of a rescue ship at all. The only thing they have going for them is hope. The hope that once again, they want to see their family. Shackleton had this this sense of hope. He had 27 other people that he was responsible for, that he wanted to get them back to to their families. Shackleton also, the the sense of mission and purpose and destiny. Man, it just kind of kept him alive. He said this, Uh, He said, to be brave happily. Now look at this quote. To be brave happily. To be patient with a glad heart. To stand in the agonies of thirst with laughter and a song. To walk beside death for months and never be sad. That's the spirit that makes courage worth having. So even in the worst of times when the ship is crushed. There's this sense of optimism and hope that there is a there's a better day that is coming. So after 16 months, you know, it, living in the in very harsh conditions, they made a decision to try to find water somewhere. They couldn't see it, so they had grabbed one of the lifeboats off the ship and they began to pull this lifeboat. You know, miles and miles, they put supplies in it, and miles and miles, they are looking for water. They have no other, you know, they have no other option, you know, than than to do that. So they they finally find water. They finally get to one of the end of the, the, the ice flows, and they have six men, actual 
picture here and they reconfigure this boat and they, they, they put supplies in it because the closest, the closest island that they knew was 800 miles away. There's no motor. You can see there's very little, you know, there's very little uh, in, the, in the way of a sail, very little way to, to help them, you know, but there was still something inside of them. It's called hope. They were not eaten up with hopelessness. They, they had hope on the inside. So they take off. And for the next 17 days, they're on this boat navigating the best they can with oars when, the, when they can. They've got hypothermia. Their water is all in the boat. And they arrive they arrive on the island, Elephant Island, 17 days later. But even when they did, Man, they, they came to the opposite side of the island. They came to the wrong side. They had a 32-mile hike with no mountain gear at all. And you know what? <clears throat> at the very end, they went and rescued their team. They found a, a whaling station. They went and rescued their, their team. Man, if you want a good read, you can, you can read that. Not one perished, not one passed away. And this is the, the picture when they finally got... They got everyone back together. Listen, hope is a necessity for our lives. We need the belief that there is a better day that is, that is coming. So let's, let's look at this. Hope is the belief that my present circumstances can change for the better. Who needs a little hope this morning? Who needs a little hope in their heart? Hope is the firm confidence in God based upon His promises. Hope is the anticipation of a better day coming. Hope is the season change from winter to spring. Hope is the faint light in the distance, uh, the faint light of promise in the distance. Hope for tomorrow makes today much Better. We need to live our lives with the seed of hope. But many are overtaken with hopelessness. Hopelessness happens when we lose the belief that my circumstance can change. When we believe that what we're going through now is permanent. I see no change in the future and it just makes us discouraged. It makes us depressed. That is hopelessness. That's hopelessness. Now let's look at this. The necessity of hope. It's like oxygen to the lungs. When you, when you lose the belief that through the Lord that there's a better day coming, man, hopelessness can overtake you. The necessity of hope. I don't understand what I'm going through, but I'll trust in God. The necessity of hope. I don't understand what I'm going through, but I will trust in God. The Apostle Paul, I love his story. As soon as he gets saved, as soon as he gets saved, unusual, he goes blind for three days. He's blind, <clears throat> all right? Uh, after, after three days, they pray for him, and he gets his sight back. At the end of the week or the next week, he preaches his very first sermon. But people were so angry with him, the Jews were so angry with him, that they had to let him down the back of the church in a basket. <clears throat> or they would have stoned him. They would have, you know, they, they would have probably killed him on that on that particular day. That's a really rough first week, okay? Really rough first week. He goes to Iconium. He preaches one of his, like a, a very first official trip, and they try to kill him. He goes to Philippi, and he cast a devil out of a sorcerer, <clears throat> and they put him in jail because she was part of the economy, so they jail him uh, because of that. He is stoned and left for dead. I mean, He's not starting out very well here. I mean, this is very complicated. But he writes, he learns the secret of hope. The belief that there is a better day with God working in your heart. The belief that there is a better day that is coming. And he wrote, <clears throat> he wrote this passage that I, that I mentioned. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. As you trust in Him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So let's look at this passage, this revelation from Paul's life. Number one, he calls Him the God of hope. <clears throat> Let me just say this morning, His hope can sustain you 
through times of uncertainty, when you don't know what's around the corner, what's, what's going to happen next in my life, the hope of God working in your heart, just that, that belief that there's a better day coming because of your relationship can, with God can provide that light and that hope that can propel you along. Look what he says. May the God of hope <clears throat> fill you with all joy and peace. So it tells me in a time when I'm walking and I don't understand, I can still in tough times, thank you, I can still have joy and peace. You don't have to be grumpy. You don't have to be in a bad mood. You don't have to pop off to each other and write nasty things on social media. Man, when you're going through a time that you don't understand at all, man, the God of hope can put joy and can put peace in your heart. In tough times, you can have joy and peace. And joy and peace, that is a sustaining joy and peace. That can come... It comes from the God of hope. We're not looking from some natural hope, some natural peace. We're looking for a supernatural joy and peace that roots itself in our heart. A joyful heart, let's look at this passage, leads to joyful actions. So joy comes from hope. Joy comes from hope. So when I have hope in my heart that whatever God, whatever I'm walking through, God is with me and He gives me joy. Man, it just, it leads to joyful actions in my life. Joy in my heart and peace in my heart is the beginning of the turnaround from hopelessness to hope. I want to tell you this morning, we're we're, we're not destined just for an existence of hopelessness with no joy and no peace. The God of hope can put something in our heart, man, that that can help us even though we don't have an answer to our issue at this time or our circumstance. And then also, look at this passage again. Let the God of hope, let let your God-given hope and optimism overflow or spill on to other people. Look at that last part. So that you may overflow with hope. This is what Paul writes. So that you may overflow with hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. So overflow means it spills out on other people that everyone knows. You know, everyone knows what's happening in our world. Everyone knows, man, that it's a really difficult time now. What we need is a hope overflow. What we need from the people of God, man, is to to rise from hopelessness and let the God of hope put a little joy in our heart and let there be a little overflow, a hope overflow in our life that works in our smile, that hope overflow that we encourage others, that we bring people along with us, that everyone around us, man, is not destined to hopelessness, but, man, that we can be a catalyst for for hope ourselves. So that's what he writes. Look at that again. May the God of hope, this is what he writes in the midst of what the, the his life that I described to you. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So he has this new revelation of hope. Okay, he's got this new revelation in the midst of this really tough time that he's having. Does it change things in his life? No. But it does give him a new perspective. Let me just say, when we're walking through difficult times, And I'm going to talk about the God of change. God can change things in just a minute. But there are times that just I just need hope to sustain me for the moment. And that's what we see in Paul's life because he gets this revelation of hope. He writes it in Romans, but he continues on in his life. So he goes to First Corinth, he goes to Corinth, and he's put in jail for preaching. He goes to Jerusalem. He's put in jail for preaching. And the sentence is that he's supposed to go to Rome and he's supposed to preach before Caesar. So, they put him on a boat. Got a lot of boat theme this morning, all right? They put him on a boat, and they take him toward Rome. He's on the boat for two months, and a hurricane comes. And the boat that he's on, it tries to put an anchor down, and man, the boat starts to pull apart. And here's Paul. Here's Paul, man, doing God's work, but he's walking in a season that he doesn't understand at the moment. But what is propelling him forward? It is the the hope that whatever he's going through, that man, God will give him joy and peace. That ship breaks up. 
And it says he floated to the next island on, on a piece of the, the boat that, that, that had broken up. He found a piece of wood. Man, he comes to the island with the other people that are on it. They dry themselves off. They go into the interior of the, the island. They try to build a fire to warm themselves up. Paul reaches his hand down. He gets bitten by a snake. Oh, my goodness. Like, this is terrible. You can't, you can't write this, you know, uh, 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 any worse for somebody. But I just want you to know that even in the midst of your darkest hour, God can give you hope. He's the God of hope that can give you joy and peace as you trust in Him, as you trust Him in this season, He can give you joy and peace that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So even though I'm walking in a season that I don't understand right now, I don't have to be depressed. I don't have to be hopeless. I can have joy and peace that God's in control. It's the necessity of hope. Our people need hope. Some of you, you're walking through an uncertain time. You need God's hope this morning. Look at the necessity of hope when I'm walking through a time that I don't understand. The necessity of hope that God can turn things around in my life. God can turn things around. David walked through one of those seasons. He needed a turnaround. He needed a turnaround. He was alone. He was a fugitive. Saul was running after him. David was a fugitive from the, from the law. And, and the whole Israeli army was looking for David. He's all by himself. He has no money. He has no friends. He's going from cave to cave. There's a death sentence on his life. He's not going back for trial. He's going. They'll, they'll kill him. They'll kill him right on the spot. He's in northern Palestine. It is hot. It is dry. It is rocky. If you've ever, you know, if you've ever been there, he found very few friendly or kind people along the way. Man, he's on the run. And this happened over months and months. Saul was after David. And, he, and, and you want to see hopelessness? I want you to read Psalms 13. Okay? Here's, here's what David writes. Man, when he's on the run from Saul, he's at his lowest moment. Look at this. See if this sounds familiar. <clears throat> How long, Lord, will you forget me? Forever? How long will you hide your face from me? He was feeling alone for a long period of time. This wasn't just a week. For a season, he felt, he felt alone from his friends, even, even from God. You know, he felt, he felt forgotten. How long must I wrestle with my thoughts day after day and have sorrow in my heart? So look at this. Here is the cycle of negativity. Does that ever, does that ever happen? The cycle of negativity, negative things just keep rolling themselves through your mind. He keeps reliving what has happened. Look at this. How, much, how, much, how long must I wrestle with my thoughts day after day and have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Okay, He makes this scene permanent because hopelessness is, is when you think that your circumstance, circumstances can't change and there's a sense of permanence that, that has come to your life. He says, look on me and answer, Lord my God. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death. He's so hopeless. This situation has, it seems like it has no resolve to it that he doesn't even want to live. He's so hopeless. And he, and he says in verse 4, And my enemy will say, I have overcome him, and my foes will rejoice when I fall. So even he's so, he's so discouraged that he, in his mind he's rehearsing this fabricated conversation with the enemy about what the enemy would say. That ever happened to you? He, he, starts, he starts repeating a conversation that never, that never happened. But that happens sometimes when there is a sense of hopelessness and a, and a sense of discouragement. Now, man, that's, that's David. Man, that's what he wrote at Psalms 13 when he's being chased by Saul. Okay, Now, <clears throat> how, did, how did David respond when hopelessness 
emerges. And I love this. Psalms 42. Look at this. Some of you need to underline this passage. You need to memorize this passage. You need to put it on your, <clears throat> excuse me, you need to put it on your screen. Psalms 42, 5. Look at this. Why are you downcast, O oh my soul? He's talking to himself. Why, why are you upset? Why are you so down? He's asking himself this question. Why are you so disturbed within me? What's the cause of this? Okay. And then look at his answer. Put your hope in God. For I will praise him, my Savior and my God. Look at that. Why are you so downcast, O oh my soul? Why are you so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God. For I will praise him, my Savior and my God. That's Psalms 42.5. Look at Psalms 42.11. He just goes a little further in writing this. And he asks himself this question again. This is a recurring question. Exact quotation. He says it again. Why are you so down? Why are you downcast, oh my soul? Why are you so disturbed within me? Put, <clears throat> put your hope in God. No, put your hope in the God of hope that can change your circumstance and, and turn them around. Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. He goes on, Psalms 43 5, an exact quote. He says it again. Why are you downcast, O oh my soul? Why are you so disturbed within me? He asked himself this question. And here's the answer. Put your hope in God, for I will praise Him, my Savior and my God. Because he realized that discouragement is the absence of hope, and he just needed a little hope in his life. And some of you have lost your hope. The, the belief that God can turn things around. You, you, you're walking in hopelessness. The belief that your circumstances are now permanent and I just want to remind you just want to remind you this morning that God wants to put a little hope in your heart today God wants you to know that whatever you're facing whatever you're going through that God can turn it around some of you've lost your faith that God can remove the obstacle or change your circumstance but I want to remind you man he is the God of hope and David said uh Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise Him, my Savior and my God. And one answer for David was to, to get that hope going was worship. Because I want to tell you, worship in dark times can bring the spark of light and hope to your heart. So I want to say, wherever you're at, however dark that it's going through right now, man, I want you to worship God. I want you to believe that God can turn things around in your life. Let God restore your hope. Now look, he writes that. And within a few years, things have changed. Saul is dead. And David is the king. David is the king of Israel. Don't ever believe for a moment that the God of hope is not also the God of miracles. And he can take your situation and turn it around. But David was learning something about, <clears throat> about hope. Why are you downcast, oh my soul? Why are you so disturbed? Put your hope in God. And I just want to say that to you this morning. Last thing, the worship team, you guys can, can come. The necessity of hope when you walk through things that you don't understand. The necessity of hope uh, uh, when, when you need God to uh, uh, turn, that God can turn things around. And the necessity of hope uh, that God can give you a second chance. That God can give you a second chance. Can I just say to some of you, you look at your life and you go, man, I've, man, I've messed up. I've, I've, I've screwed up. I knew better on some things and I still did it. I'm ashamed. <clears throat> I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed. Some people are just down on themselves. They're just down on themselves. They've made errors and they're just down. They have no confidence that their life can ever be better or ever turn around they're just hopeless they're just thinking this is what this is what my life is based on my past these are the consequences of my choices and i want to say you know what you know like like the, the life i have now is what i deserve it's based on my choices 
you know what? That's kind of a new age thing called karma, okay? That, that the end of your life is going to be the sum total of the choices that you have made. But let me just tell you something this morning. We don't believe in karma. We don't believe in karma. Let me, let me read you about hope. Those of you that are hopeless that my life could ever change, this is the way that it's going to be. Let me read you this passage. 1 Peter 1.3 says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at this. In His great mercy, He's given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So we don't have to live a life, you know, like, man, I've made poor choices and my life right now is the result of my, the sum total of my choices and it's the way it's always ever going to be. You know what? We don't believe in that because we believe there's a great mercy. God, God can take you even when you've done things that are wrong. Even when you've made mistakes that you're ashamed of. Even when you take the blame and you go, no, I've, I've done some dumb things. Let me just tell you, there is a great mercy that He's given us. A new birth through a, into a living hope because of the resurrection of Jesus. I want to tell you this morning that your life today... It's not, doesn't have to be a precursor, you know, of of what's going to happen in the future. Man, you're into a new mercy today. You're into a new hope that if you'll give Him that opportunity of your life, He can turn that around. You are not destined today to live out the rest of your days because of the choices that you've made in your life. Man, God can turn things around for you and give you a new life if you'll do that. Some people are hopeless. They don't think their life can ever change. This is all I'll ever be. This is all what will ever happen. And I'm telling you, no way. No way. Man, if you'll give him, if you will give him that opportunity, the Lord can change your life. If you'll give Jesus an opportunity, there can be a heart change and a life change. And you are not destined today to live out the rest of your days because of the choices you've made in the past. Man, there is a new birth. There is a living hope that the Lord can give and can give you. So as I close this morning, I want to pray. <clears throat> Worship team's going to come. They're going to sing it. I'm going to come back and pray. But if you're discouraged and hopeless this morning, man, if you're depressed, if you're walking through a season of uncertainty, man, and you're just, you just think, man, this is this is it. I'm just, I'm hopeless. I've lost the belief that my, you know, that my life can change, I want to tell you, I mean, the God of hope can do something in your life. I don't know. I don't know, man, if circumstances change, but sometimes I just need hope in my life that God is in control. Some of you, you need, you need a turnaround. You need the God of hope and the God of miracles. We're going to pray for that. Some of your hopelessness this morning, like you did with David, who was so discouraged, and all of a sudden, man, things changed in his life. We're going to We're going to do that. Some of you need a life change. Some of you need a life change. This is a moment where some of you need to listen to your heart. You're looking around the world going, what is going on with the world? This is God trying to get your attention and saying, come, come to me. Come to me. So I want to pray over you this morning. If you are discouraged, if you are hopeless, if you are depressed this morning. Lord, I pray over them today. Lord, I pray for those that are walking through a season of uncertainty. Lord, and there's a a sense of permanence attached to this. Lord, it's affected their song of worship. It's affected their prayer. Lord, I pray this morning that the God of hope, the God of hope would put that light of faith back in their heart. Oh, God, I pray. I pray for those who are walking through a season of uncertainty. We may not know the end result. But we don't have to walk in, a, in, a, in hopelessness in this time. There, As we trust the Lord, there is joy. There is peace. There is the overflow of hope that you want to do in our life. Lord, I pray over that. I pray for those that are walking in that season of uncertainty. May they feel the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit this morning, surging in their heart, turning hopelessness to hope this morning. Lord, I pray for those that need a circumstance change. Lord, they've lost their hope because of a circumstance. But like David, Lord, if they'll just 
keep having their hope in you and their worship in dark times. Lord, you can turn that circumstance. And I pray this morning for those that need a miracle today. Lord, I pray, God, that you would do that. I pray, God, that and know that you can change circumstances today. I pray for those that need a little hope. They need a circumstance turned around. Lord, I pray over that. Lord, I pray for those that need a little hope. They just need a second chance. Oh, God. Oh, God, I pray for those that just feel like they've done too much. Lord, they've gone too far. Lord, they're going to live out the the rest of their life based on the choices that they've made in the past. Lord, I pray over them today because there's a great mercy out there. Lord, there's a second chance. There's another chapter, Lord, that you want to to write in, in, in their life. Lord, and I pray over them today. I pray. Lord, that another chapter is written. A life change can occur. And if that's you this morning, they're going to put a prayer on the screen. And I want you to pray this with me. And it's a very simple prayer. But man, it can start with with God working in your heart, writing that second chapter. Pray this with me. It says, I know that I'm a sinner. Dear Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I ask you for forgiveness. I believe that you died for my sins you rose from the dead I turn from my sins and I invite you into my heart and life I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior and if you prayed that man God can God can do that God can give you a new life it's called a new birth he can do that he can do that and if that's you man message me put it if you're watching on on Facebook put hey I prayed that prayer with a pastor, somebody will be in touch with you. We we want you to know, man, you're not shackled to the decisions of your past, but we live in a season of mercy and hope and God can change your life. Last verse. But the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear Him and those whose hope is in His unfailing love. The eyes of the Lord are upon those that fear Him and on those who who hope in His unfailing love. He's watching over you, watching for you this morning.